So this is my summer madness. It keeps me sane. I'm Christine Higgins, and, and this is Reed Field, Maine. And when I retired, I decided, gee, I'm going to be a full-time artist. <clears throat> So all paper is fiber. Uh, this machine is called a Hollander. It beats the fibers. This is um, um, a mix here in here of cotton and abaca, which is my base that I use. Um, and this is what beats the fibers. They go around. And this particular fiber has been beaten for four hours. You use different parts of the plants. You can use the stem, you can use the, the, the leaves, and depending on which part of the fiber you use from the plant, then you uh, will get different results and different colors, and depending on the season in which you gather the plant. So that's why it's important to take notes. This is uh, from Craig's Collard Greens, and in fact, that's the first time I started eating collard greens. They're absolutely delicious. They're the new kale. Um, but this is paper, and you can see how soft that is. It doesn't make that crinkly sound. So every paper will give you different results, or every fiber will give you different results. Uh, this is a little different. This is denim. Denim is cotton. A lot of people make paper out of their jeans. Just cut them up into little pieces of paper. Uh, linen, like a linen cloth. Uh, you can make paper from rags. That's originally that's how paper was ma made. The women would go out and gather the rags. So the paper making, everything is all about water which I happen to love. Uh, there's a certain amount of materials you absolutely have that are essential. One, a waterproof apron, and two, waterproof shoes. Um, and I do this uh, paper making in the summertime and the fall. This is what's called a mold and a decal. It's really a beautiful piece of equipment. There's a little bit of a drain. For a very simple looking machine, it's actually quite, or tool, it's quite complicated. It's all handmade, so it's like a piece of sculpture. This is a vat, just something you get from the hardware store. They use them for mixing concrete and things like that. Um, as you know, most artists will appropriate anything they can for making art. But I'm going to add in this brownish, reddish, warmer color. As I'm working a little bit, I started with blues, I graduate uh, uh, my colors, and, and now I'm wor working more towards some grays, so when that purple mixed with that brown, you're going to get a nice soft gray. And I'm just dispersing those fibers into the water so that they're not all clumping down on the bottom. All right, so you take the molten deckle and you just dip it into the bath. And a light shimmy, I call it a shimmy, is I start draining more of the water out. You see how it's all directed down into one space. And this is the patience part of making paper, is that you wait till the paper, till the water comes out. So, well, you look outside and you think about <laughs> the lovely view. But you have to stay very focused on what you're doing, which is another thing that I love about making art. You know, let go of the rest of the world and focus on this, you know. And I don't waste the water either. Um, I do take it and put it on my garden. Some people um, get really nervous when I start teaching them paper making about the fibers that are on this mold. Well, guess what? They're not going to go anywhere. We'll uh, put the mold onto that pillow. And first one's always a little tricky, so let's hope it works. And then you do a very light, kind of rock a little bit back and forth, and then snap. Fibers are uh, 
my first thing I do is I do 10 hour Avica, uh, which is a real, real strong paper, and that makes it very translucent. And I use that for what's called pulp painting. Take your different colors from this overbeaten and put them in little containers that you can use for painting, uh, decorating your fibers. Just make a form that fits inside your deco. Put a piece of plastic into this little mold that I have made. I'm going to press it down. So we're taking the fiber from the vat and putting it into the little deco box. So let's put some of that in different places. So again, this is the overbeaten abaca to which I've added a lot of formation aid. So this is, this is fun because it's just play. So now what I'm going to do is to pull this plastic out. And what happens, happens. I see paper and pulp as a lot like clay. The fiber is very um, like a piece of cloth. You can just fold it like a piece of soft leather or something. It's really neat. So it has a lot of sculptural possibilities. So the high amount of abaca in the paper will, will help with shrinking these papers onto the form. So I'll drape paper over certain forms and let them just dry sculpturally. So this is an example. This is. Uh, like a kind of a landscapey. This is all dried now. You can see where the forms were. This is another one. And I let the rock stay in. They, they, the, it dried right around them, but then there were other forms. You can make paper in a blender. You can make paper by just beating it different plants. So it's not an intimidating process and it brings you right back to the earth, which is just great. It's like it's magic. Mm -hmm.